but I don't think the, uh, my, most RF classes will not treat the Vivaldi antenna. Uh, but it's a very simple antenna, piece of metal, cheap. And the electric field is established vertically here, here at the beginning. Here's a connector. And then the electric field, you know, the distance gets longer and longer and longer. And it's kind of smoothly guided out. And at one moment, the electric field has completely forgotten that it wants charge carriers to live from. And then it just radiates. So in this front region, what happens at the here inside, the, the field lines are still connected. The, there's a positive charge to the negative. And there's a field line, yeah? But the further you go out with upgoing frequency, the, the, the field line loses the connection to the charge carriers. Now the field line will not just end anywhere. No, the field line will close itself because of the magnetic field which goes through it. And depending on the frequency, this antenna goes to 10 gigahertz. At 10 gigahertz, the, the separation from the charges may happen here. And at 600 megahertz, the lowest frequency, the separation of the charges will, will be at the end. And one could make this antenna very broadband. Of course, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And we have one antenna here, another antenna there. We measure the transmission from here to here. And I go up to 3 gigahertz here, and I start like at low frequency, and the antenna doesn't work well. Here, here we see the antenna doesn't work very well. And it starts to work very well here, and we see we have a very smooth response. The, one of the advantages of the Valdi antennas, it's very broadband antenna, and let's say I call it very well behaved. It doesn't have ugly resonances or something. It's a very easy to build antenna also. Yeah? We have two vertical polarized antenna and the electric field here couples to here. And, and uh, can we go back there? And when we might move the antennas, of course, the signal couples better. If you move the antennas further away, the signal couples yours. Now, this is pretty much to expect. Now I rotate one antenna by 90 degrees. And now the antennas don't couple very well to each other. You know, so we are 20 dB down, roughly, quite a bit. There are some cables which does some you know, reflections and blah, 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 blah. But it's understandable, one, with the, with the transmitting field is vertical and the antenna looks for a horizontal field that there's little coupling, yeah? There's some maybe. This is not shielding. This just means the, 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 the polarizations are differently. Now let's, let's put this here. Let's bring it back. We have our signal. And of course, you, you will be completely surprised that the, that the, that the, uh, that the plate shields, yeah? And at low frequencies, some signal gets around because the plate isn't that large. Yeah? It's, it's absolutely not a surprise. The signal goes down by, by if I put a plate here, because I said the vertical polarized fields bounces off and reflects. And if the plate would be very large, no field would get around. But right now, at low frequencies, still some field gets around. Now let's take some other materials which we have. And this is a metallized cloth. And it's not so big, so it's for this frequency. Oops. Uh, for this frequency, we see it shields, but it doesn't shield that good. But that's also maybe related to its size. This is a weak conductor, you know. So I said a couple hundred ohm. So if we put that there, uh, we'll see. We see a moderate reduction. It's a pretty broadband, you know. And by the way, in this case, it's not only a reflection. In this case, part of the power is absorbed. So if I would run a couple hundred watt there and put this in here, it would catch fire. The metal lot it would just reflect. The losses are very low. Here, the losses are relatively high. Now, if the field is vertical, yeah, and I put them in here, we see a lot of shielding. There's a lot of air. Most is air, yeah? But it shields very well. well the, Spacing between these rods is less than lambda half. They're pretty close for the wavelength. So the wavelength can boop, go through. If I turn this thing by 90 degree, there's no shielding. It doesn't shield at all. Yeah? And it cannot shield because the rods are horizontal, but there's no horizontal E field. So there's nothing, there's nothing the thing can do. Yeah? And and now comes the part which I like most in this. Now we do the following thing. We rotate one antenna horizontal and the other vertical. Now you see the coupling between the antennas, you see it back here. It's 20 dB down. 
So the coupling is relatively weak between the two antennas now, yeah? And now I hold this in in a 45 degree angle. And suddenly the signal goes up. So I take out again and put in again at 45. If I do it vertically, it's really low. The signal should be about 6 dB down. I don't know if that's 6 dB or 10, but some number like that, not too far away. This, if, this, if this thing would be very large, we would probably see 6 dB quite well. We have one field here, this one antenna, and this is a metal wall, and there's a e, e total must be zero here. So this thing cannot receive anything anymore if there's a metal wall because the field from the transient here, so the field width from the transmit which comes here, and the field from the reaction is zero together. That's the wall as you Now, if I go here with my rods, this is vertical polarized, this is vertical polarized, but they are all horizontal. So basically no current will flow in them because the current would have to flow from here to here to here. So it doesn't shield. And now this is the fun which I showed, it, but it's very difficult to show in, in, <laughs> in Zubi. Here we have the field here from the transmitter and it causes a current at 45 degree. And the horizontal portion of the field caused by the 45 degree current can be received. I think the actual experiment is better and il il illustrates it better because it's very hard to understand what's going on in this geometry. It's like from Salvador Dali. Okay, now, now I have my two coils here, here, and I've frozen the trace there, and we can put something in between. So this is, would be a very good shield. I don't know what's happening up there, but it shields maybe 40, what's that, 30, 40 dB, yeah? So it will shield, but you see at really low frequencies, where you need a lot of, uh, where you don't have a lot of time derivative, yeah? where the D, 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 B, D, T, the change of the magnetic field is low, it basically goes through. And, and for the aluminum plate, DC field, magnetic field of Earth goes through. Yeah? The aluminum plate will start shielding maybe at a kilohertz or 100 hertz or something like that. Now there will be current flowing, but the impedance is really high. You need for magnetic shielding really low impedance. It will probably do nothing. I can just put where nothing happens. It's completely useless. At least of plus in between, of course. We, we are not a full of hope that it has any magnetic effects. Uh, you see the ferrite rod helps to transport the magnetic fields from one from one loop to the other. Sideways it probably does nothing. A very little, little reduction. Ah, see, we about 10 dB is a reduction because the magnetic field has a much easier path to flow back in the in the high permeability material rather than flowing to the other coil. And now, in wireless power transfer to increase the coupling from coil to coil, one can put the ferrite behind the coil, and it should increase it. And the ring does not a tremendous reduction because it's not a solid field not a solid plate, but to some extent it reduces because there's a current induced in the ring and the ring, it, it's counteracting. And where there's small ring, there's big ring. And of course it should have the same effect. I don't know if it's stronger or weaker. We can of course have two rings, four rings. And if we have a thousand rings, we have a solid plate. But the, the ring basically, Forces a current. If I turn the ring by 90 degree, I think it's completely effectless because there's no current flowing. And the permeability isn't high enough. I rotate it, it goes down. We can turn them. Now they don't couple very well. Yeah? So what does the ring do? One coil causes a magnetic field in the ring. The magnetic field in the ring, because it's an AC field, causes a current. That current causes a magnetic field which has a different orientation so the other one can detect it. So this experiment is very similar to the barbecue experiment. Thank you for coming and I wish my scope